Hello, this is Dr. Robert O. Uh, well, we're starting a brand new lecture series. Uh, let's share the screen and then uh, we're going to get our lecture going after prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this lecture. Um, I ask for your favor, Lord, as we engage in this academic uh, journey, that it will be time of inspiration, time to uh, really hear from you, Lord. Let it not just be textbook-based, but let it be revelatory. Uh, let revelation of God manifest, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, uh, this lecture series is called Cup Benel Dynamics in Cambodia. Paksu. Um, this would be out of the Cambodia Research and Resource Center series. Uh, last time I did a CPTI uh, lecture. Uh, about this time, it will be out of Cambodia Research and Resource Center. And this is, will be offered as a course, uh, not only for CPTI, but people who would like to learn about cup banner dynamics in Cambodia. The textbook, of course, will be one above. Uh, for CPTI students, I already gave it to you. CPTI stands for Cambodia Presbyterian Theological Institute. It's only one textbook. Uh, grading would be a little different than last time, because uh, we asked for the final paper, but 90% uh, of you couldn't produce. So it will be just lecture notes. So every lecture uh, you summarize, and then there will be 40% of your grade. And then we'll do an in-class presentation. Or if we have to do it through Zoom, then it will be during Zoom session, each will give you a presentation of what you have learned. And attendance will be 20%. As always, it will not be based on information only. And we believe in accurate information, but we want this class to be also based on inspiration and impartation. I want you to learn something, not just based on your head, uh, but out of your heart as well. Uh, as I said already, uh, we did already cover the first part of the book through Cambodia Presbyterian Theological Institute, March 16 through 31st. Uh, I did my lecture series there uh, with almost what, eight or nine of you. But this will be the second part, uh, but I'm not offering a CPTI only, but I'm offering as uh, CRRC, Cambodia Research and Resource Center. And dealing more specifically with Kap Ben Ul uh, situation. For those of you who do not know what Kap Ben Ul is, I'm gonna do a brief introduction and review of, of this particular class. Uh, out of the whole book table of content, we cover uh, ch first chapter four. Uh, now uh, we are going to finish this book, this time with my personal missional practice of last 20 years. So. What I have done uh, is in March is talking about patron-client relationship as Kapenur and try to define it. And we talked about church planting mainly, about church planting that uh, CPTI has planted. Uh, you have uh, indicated that you planted 160 churches. But now with this particular class, uh, I'm going to actually incorporate uh, what I have done as a missionary in Cambodia last 20 years. And so there are many projects I've done that I'm going to share a few of the projects. For example, the Center of Peace Orphanage Ministry that we partnership with, but I'm going to see how my role has changed and is it really patron client? Is it really company relationship? So that'll be very interesting. And unlike textbook information, uh, my information is something that I have experienced. So it will be very intimate. As I always insist, 
scholarship. My scholarship is not based on textbook only. My scholarship, scholarship is based on as a, re as a re reflective practitioner. practitioner. So, so reflective practitioner means that means that uh, I will not talk about something that I have not practiced. It's not just theory out of me. It is something that I've done uh, for many years, uh, some close to 15 years, uh, some 10 years, things like that. So I'll be covering the last part of the book. Um, well, my book, Kapenul, uh, Korean Patron Client Dynamics in Church Planning Cambodia, the main uh, usage of this book or abstract, the articulation of the entire 300 page thesis is the following. Patronage governs most relationship in global South cultures. However, regrettably, missionaries rarely recognize these distinctive cultural realities. Moreover, misunderstanding patron patronage creates problems not only for missionaries, but also for national pastors. This book endeavors to demonstrate that when a patron plays a role of a father figure, he plays a significant role in developing national pastors as church planters and offers an alternative reading of aid dependency as a relational concept rather than an economic one. Okay, for non-English speaker, uh, you must understand this word by word. And if you don't fully understand this, Take picture, write it down, look in the dictionary, every single word, look for it. And you must fully understand because entire book, entire thesis, entire class that I'll be doing uh, is based on this. So if you don't understand this, you don't have to sit there, and listen to a lot of stuff because you won't understand what I'm talking about because this is the reason I'm teaching the class, okay? Uh, and I, I don't want to complicate, I don't want to too simplify either because it is a complex issue. Uh, it is a complex issue, but I don't want to complicate uh, the difficult problem. So we'll examine a dependency issue via Korean Kapenul dynamics, my mission work in Cambodia. Because I primarily look at through the money issue, financial issue, economic issues. I realize that it's not, it's not that way. There is issue with money, but it goes way beyond that. It's not just money. It was uh, actually the relational cup and her issue. And so, as I said already, patron client. So what is patron client? Well, let's review uh, last class. For those of you taking this class for the first time, it's okay. I'm gonna cover the basics so you'll know. So when we talk about patron client, we're talking about one who gives protection, one who gives finance, one who gives position and access. And when we talk about client, as they receive that, he's giving back the loyalty, giving thanksgiving and allegiance, meaning that I belong to you. In a way, it would be like a in Japanese term is oyabung and gobong, or in Korean is kap and er. The same kind of social dynamics happens in Korea. And my argument is that when we try to see what's happening between Korean missionaries and Cambodian pastors, patron client really does not describe completely, rather it's kap and er. Because Koreans come from a Kapenul cultural background, he walks in to Cambodia and Cambodia also had a similar uh, social dynamic. And it's not really patron client, although Western socio-anthropologists calls it patron client. What you are experiencing is it works more closely with Kapenul. So that was my whole argument, my whole book, whole thesis. And as we share the patron client, there's give and take, give and take. There's gotta be patron giving status, prestige, honor, influence, control, power, political loyalty must be given by client. So then client receives security, money, intercession, tenacity, 
tenacity, identity, employment, access, resources. So it's got to give and take. If patron makes more, get, takes more, then it becomes exploitation. If client takes more and becomes dependency and paternalism, it's got to be balanced reciprocity. Okay, Relationship is very reciprocal, personal, and asymmetrical. Okay? We're going to cover that uh, in this time more thoroughly. But that's what patron-client relationship is. I'm going to have a lot of this all over uh, the class. Uh, what do you think? So what you need to do, the first video series that you see through YouTube, and my uh, email address is listed at that YouTube information section. Please email me. Uh, write a lecture number, right? And then talk very specifically and ask me questions so that when we actually resume our lecture, either through Zoom, if COVID persists, or if COVID-19 gets relaxed and we can come out of our lockdown, then we're going to see face-to-face -face, uh, and we're gonna talk about it and discuss your question. So this is a basic patron-client relationship dynamic. So there is a patron on top, and then they think of first order broker, FOBs, and then there's a client. Okay, and I'm gonna cover not only major points of the patron client, but all 10 characteristic of patron client in reflection to the central piece orphanage that, that I, I work with. But in case of my book and in ca case of the CBC, Cambodia Bible College, which is a synonym, it's not a real name, I found there's a three unique diachronic and progressive roles, father, sponsor, and partner. I'll be still talking about that, how I play their role okay, as a um, in patron-client relationship dynamic, not from the Korean missionary to Cambodian pastors, but me as a patron to my client, Center of Peace Orphanage. So this is very interesting and I could give you a lot more insight. Uh, I told you about how patron comes and play the father role. And it is something that I've actually shared in Korea, in many countries. And then because the people has been saying that all oh, dependency is bad, you cannot have a dependent relationship on, on keep on talking about them. And I said, well, how could dependency be bad in father and child relationship? Can someone really say that, oh, this child is evil? by depending on the father or mother. No, of course not. You know, dependency is not bad. It's expected and needed and must, mandatory for an infant child. Sorry, the dogs outside is barking. So when we talk about life cycle stages of a patron as a father, of course the protection is major part, right? The dependency level between these two groups correspond to the life stages of their relationship. So if patron is a father, his key word is protection, and it's what? It is de 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 dependency is expected. Of course you need dependent, just like a child. But what if it's sponsor? Then the key word is provision, and then the dependency you kind of detach a little bit, a little more independent. At the same time, you're dependent. And we see that progress between Korean missionaries and Cambodian pastors. And uh, at most, they are at this stage. But you don't want to stay there because you really want to move to the partnership issue where you become much more independent. And I mean, there's a dependency issue, but you are much more independent, partner to partner. Now. Um, it does not mean that when you become a partner that your father and son relationship is over. No, of course not. You know, you, you just like your when you were born, the relationship that between father and son doesn't just because son gets richer and and uh, independent doesn't mean that oh I trash 
the relationship, you're nobody to me. It doesn't work like that. That's, that would be social contract based. This is a relationship based. That's what Kapbet Ul is. Right? So the relationship doesn't change, function change. So partner, the keyword is equality. Partner, the keyword is partnership. Uh, the fairness equal, equal. So significant contribution of this book uh, would be offering a new interpretation of a dependency in context of Korean missionaries and Cambodian church planters. So um, what do you think? Do you remember uh, for my students on two classes? Do you remember? Uh, refresh. If you need to go back, Go back to the old uh, lecture series. And that's why it's so important that I have it in YouTube. You could just watch over and over again. So now uh, brand new lecture series on CRRC, Cambodia Research and Resource Center. So that you, it's not, I'm not just teaching to CPTI now. So I'll be teaching to general public, whoever wants to learn. Uh, could learn and then we could have a Zoom meeting together. Uh, central Peace, Lecture One. God better dynamic in Central Peace. Central Peace was orphanage. And that I uh, started ministering here since from 2007. The patron client relationship pyramid between Robert, me, and Central Peace overall. This is a big picture of patron client. Uh, my primary patron is the organization that I belong to called Life Giving Ministry. That is in America. Through that organization, people give to that organization. That organization now supports me. Okay, So I do have a patron. I am what they call first order broker. So to Life Giving Ministry USA, I'm a client. But my clientele is a little different because I turn around and I have my own client. That's why technically in socio-anthropology, I am called FOB, first order broker. And in this case with central peace, central peace becomes my client, okay? But from Bopar's perspective, the, the head of, of the central peace or the director of central peace or the founder of central peace, Bopar, is a beautiful Cambodian lady who start Central Peace. And to, from her perspective, I am a primary patron, right? She doesn't care about patron about me because she is in dyadic relationship with me. Asymmetrical dyadic relationship. I'm gonna explain what that means. There's two involved, but it's up and down, not side by side. I am a primary patron on top and she plays the first order broker. Why? Because center of peace director now plays COP children, all the children start out with 15, turns out to be 82, 72. Later, every child is her client in a sense. Okay? That's the social dynamic. So I am cop and she's a and when Ur turns around, she becomes God and all the children becomes Ur. So who is Bopar of Central Peace? It's amazing. You know what you can do these days? Oh, research these days is so easy, especially if you have some kind of paper trail. And, um, and this is what I typed up. Bopar Central Peace. Okay. Bopar Central Peace. Then these are the images. You know, when you do Google search, now this one, you don't have to do Google Scholar research because she will never come out in any of the Googles because she never wrote anything, right? So in this case, Google search is better than Google Scholar's search. So Google search and I type Bopar Central Peace. And you know, when you click all at all the website that she's listed, map, she'll be in Cambodia. But image, that's when you click. When you click that, this is the image that you got. It's amazing that they actually have all these pictures of her. Okay, so what's the point? Key point in research is the importance of keywords. That's the key point. 
What do I mean by that? When you start with the wrong keywords, then you're not going to get that. How did I get that? Well, I got, bam, all the Bopar's information in one, one search because I type up the right keywords, Bopar Central Peace. I didn't even have to type Cambodia. Because how many people in the world could be identified as Bopar Central Peace from Africa? There will be no Bopar in Africa. It's Cambodian name, right? Which means Bopar. I think it's beautiful or something, right? Um, so key point in research is always make sure that you know which goes first. If I put, for example, Central Peace Cambodia, guess what I got as the major images? Completely different. There's no face of part. Why? Because Central Peace, actually, it's center for peace is the key. Central Peace, there's no such thing as center. When you type Central Peace Cambodia, the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies Institute comes up, right? It's a huge organization. What if you put Central P, COP in Cambodia? Cop means police, right? So all the police of Cambodia shows. So it's very, very important that you type Bopar Central Peace. So when you did that, I found all the information that I need. Central Peace, Christian Orphanage in Cambodia, Miss Yo's Bopar. And then I was able to locate Bopar's entire life story out of her website, out of her blog, out of Facebook, anything that was ever published named Bopar in context of Central Peace, it's there. So let's find out who she is and why she started Central Peace. So she went through Kamaruj and of course becomes orphan. And she meets this lady, Miss Ali Blair, who seems to know my name and take interest in me. How did she know who I was? She told me she heard about me from my relative. She asked me if I wanted to come to her house, help her. I said, yes, I do. After church, she gave me the tour of her place and showed me what I was expected to do. She asked me, do you need a week to think about it? I told her, no, I will start tomorrow at first light. <laughs> Ali was so kind to me and even offered to share her meal time with me. Every meal, she would set a place for me. And when I saw that, it brought, to, brought tears to my eyes. I rarely had anyone value me in the least over all these years. She treated me like a sister and listened to all my heartaches cried when she heard about all I had gone through. So she found this beautiful Christian lady, okay, in her 90s. And she continues the relationship with Bopar, okay. And then in 1991, there was a Cambodia, uh, year 2000. In 2000, World Concern discontinued the project, but gave me some equipment and leftover funding. We began with 15 kids. And the parents paid $15 per child per month and they receive a daycare and two meals. In 2001, we start Central Peace with 15 children at risk who needed refuge from domestic violence or whose mother were widowed, could not care for them. So officially Central Peace began 2001. Okay? And there was a group called War Concern, gave some money, founding money and some equipments. And she meets 93, Marianne Staten. So it's that kind of connection that she has, but they don't know, but they are playing the role of patron uh, to Bopar. So 2001, World Concern, in a way, uh, gave money to Central Peace and Central Peace in a way becomes the first order broker and she had 15 children as client. That would be the social dynamic. So work concern was cop, central piece was ur, they ur turn around and becomes a cop to 15 children as ur. So in the beginning, 
this is for parts writing. I had only older sister and support me morally and physically. We had many needs during the time. I was happy that my vision was beginning to take shape. In the second year, we were providing for 50 children in recovery. So she starts out with how many? 2001 with 15 children. In a few years, it became 50 children. Our budget was next to nothing. I had to sell all my jewelry to keep us going. Wow. Okay. And then had two foreigners who helped keep the doors open. Sister Kiko of Japanese missionary was one of those who helped us right beginning up till now. So another patron merges. It's Sister Kiko from Japan. Keep on supporting. So now Central Peace grew from 15, now 50. Then 2007, ta-da, I show up, okay? What happened is that I started coming to Cambodia 2001 and we did some uh, project in Kampong Cham. Uh, we built Bright, Bright Future School uh, and all that was done in 2007. I was in Batambam praying, asking God that Lord, seven year term is over. I wanna to go to Hawaii, release me. God said, no. You need to rent the apartment in Phnom Penh. So 2007, I start renting a flat around Tultulpong area, Russian market. Right across from my flat was Central Peace Orphanage. That's how our relationship began. So what happens? I am the life-giving ministry from USA. I'm the first order broker. And then Central Peace becomes my client. So I am cop, central peace is good. And then 2011, what happened is that central peace uh, starts a new, had to start a new group because uh, government wanted all the children out, the 18 years and older out of the orphanage. So they start a house of peace. So we start supporting that. Actually the central peace I have a COP file here, but we start having a house of prayer. Originally was called Oasis House. It was, uh, I start renting September, 2011. Okay. September 11, September, 2011, um, Oasis House. That was originally called, but then they said, well, since the children from Central Peace now going to the next house, why don't we call it House of Prayer? So I said, sure. So on September, I start renting uh, near PC Market, House 44 Street 371, Senkot Kan Menche. Menche. It was... Uh, $300 per month. So from 2011, September, we moved in and we lived there uh, three years uh, until July 26, 2014. So for uh, three years, I lived with, I think, uh, something like 18 orphans. Um, here in uh, 2006, this is Bhopal writing. I got my high school diploma 2006 and I immediately start bachelor's in English and finish degree in 2010, right? Um, I was really impressed by Bhopal. And I think there's something uh, what leadership can learn. Bhopal, uh, although she couldn't finish school because of obvious reasons, she's orphaned and you know, the Kamaruj happened but as soon as she had opportunity, she intentionally went to high school, finished high school, start bachelor, and then she teach herself all there through a master degree, which we helped to get her master degree. Now she could use Excel. She, used, she actually did a master MBA program, which is fantastic. And I think this really speaks to uh, all the leadership. Leadership is not just made. It's, I mean, it's just not born. 
Leader, leaders are not born. Leaders are made. You have to make effort. You need to spend time. I was very, very impressed with her. Um, also, during the time, I began to attend church again. And next year, I enrolled in a number of short courses. But for a significant event in my life was my enrollment in Peace Bridges, a local NGO started by an Australian expat where I learned family mediation. It helped me to process much of the trauma of my past and brought healing to my heart and soul. I was grateful to God for Peace Bridges, especially learning how to listen and trust another couple mentors with the deepest part of my soul. Wow. 2012, I enrolled in Diamond Project leadership training offered by Dove and finished at the top of my class. That is where she meets her future husband. <laughs> and then, uh, as she said, the Center of Peace began. So located in Phnom Penh, the Center of Peace is home of 70 children aged 3 to 18. When I, when I uh, went there in 2007, she had 82 children, I believe, 82 or 83. They are orphans or come from families that can no longer care for them. So most of them were actually had family, but it's mom and dad, you know, in the villages, they just cannot have raised, you know, five children or four children or two children. And when they are so poor, they cannot feed the children. They would actually bring the children to Phnom Penh and give it to Bapar. A single caretaker and teacher, Yos Bapar, has been caring for the children for five years. Right, and so uh, that's when 2007. Um, wow, and this is uh, Bopar educating herself. You see that right there. Uh, year 2009, she said that I'll be taking an exam, uh, 15, 17 December. Okay, she's finishing her bachelor of English. Very, very impressive leader. Bopar is amazing leader. So 2009, her website uh, talks about, this really impressed me, uh, 2009 already, right? Uh, how many years ago it was, like 12 years ago, she already registered coporphanage.com. She bought a website, so she had an email, bopar at coporphanage.com. I thought that was fantastic. So she was really ahead of the game, okay? How many of you even, as a as a pastor and how many of you actually have a website that's under your ministry how many of you have a email address that is based on your website okay this is 2021 okay 12 years ago an orphan girl named Bopar educate herself through high school college and master and learn how to buy a website and have an email address under Bopar at coporphanage.com. That's just, that speaks a lot about leadership. And then she put in 2009, this is her webpage, 2009. Um, contribution can be wire transfer to, okay. <laughs> I, I thought there was like, oh my goodness. See, I know of, that if, if I met her 2009 and got that information, I wouldn't be able to support her, especially from America, right? Uh, for outsider, for, for patron, if it becomes so difficult that I actually have to go to a bank and you know transfer wire, transfer wire takes about $45 transaction fee, and then I have to pay that. And then when you receive the Cambodia bank also charges as, as much as up to $75 for transfer fee. So I realized, wow, 2009, Central Peace must really struggle receiving funding. Why? Because nobody is willing to do that. Unless it's like, you know, $5,000, $2,000. Uh, but who, who supports like that? It's usually $100, $50. But nobody's going to transfer wire $50 and it's going to cost you $45 to transfer wire. So that was the limitation of Central Peace 2009. Um, yeah, I, I said, wow, they must really struggle. What about you? How do you do your mission? How do you expect your sponsor to support you? You know, this is not 2009. This is 
2021. Kind of think about that and then we'll talk about it in class. So she started, she graduated from Dove's Diamond Project Level 2 at top of my class. And there she is, you know, December 22. Engaged to Brian on December 22nd. To this guy, Brian Mayer. He's the author of Cry of Gecko, right? It's a history of Christian mission in Cambodia. I actually used that for my PhD. It's a very good book. Uh, he was a missionary to Cambodia for many years. Um, so Bopar and Brian Marys. Now, how did the patron client dynamic change? Okay, in the minds of the donor. This is very important and only reflected practitioner would understand. Only people who has a mission field will understand. The theorist, uh, missiologist in the seminary, Bible college, mission school would, would not understand. Why? Because you don't have a mission field. You would only think in, the, in terms of textbook. That's why I think I can make a contribution because I actually am living through this. Because I thought it was really fascinating how dynamics completely changed. Now, everybody thinks, well, now Brian becomes a patron. Why do, why, Pastor Robert, why, do, why does Bhopal need you? She married an American missionary. So he should definitely become a patron, rightfully. And Bhopal and the centerpiece and all the children now all taken care. Why? Well, because she married an American missionary. Isn't it interesting? how in the psyche of the Cambodia people, I'm not talking about just Cambodian people though. You know, when um, Bopar married Brian, all the Korean donors that who was supporting Central Peace said, oh, call me, oh, then we no longer want to help. I said, why? Central Peace still need help? I said, oh no, but she married a rich American. Why would I help? She married American missionary. Isn't that interesting how the dynamics change? Okay. And of course, immediately something changed and that is, well, Brian's now doing the website. So it looks so nice. Okay. <laughs> so nice. It's more professional, right? So he started doing the updates. Central Peace updates, greeting friends. These days we have 56 children staying here at the center, 30 boys and 26 girls, five boys will finish high school. Okay, next August 13 and plan to continue their studies in university. For the younger children, we have programs in the center, English, Khmer language. And so this was thriving 2013 for part married and the Brian's doing his part. Um, but honestly, he wasn't able to actually raise extra fund for Central Peace. So matter of fact, because Bopar married, uh, she lost major funders, major funders. And I'm gonna go into that a little later. So 2000, uh, February, 2013, of course, I was in there, that's me, uh, and that's my wife. Uh, birthday celebration, thank you, Pastor O. Found, found us funding for the children's birthday celebration. We celebrate birthdays every month. They get to so much love and they know how much God cares for them. Because one day I asked them, um, do you guys celebrate birthdays at COP? And she says, no. I said, why not? Well, some orphans, they don't even know her birth, their birthday. So I said, that's not right. Why don't you give them a birthday? Like when they came to COP, why don't you consider that their birthday? And every month, all the children who has a birthday would always get a cake, right? They have a huge cake and every birthday kids get a celebration. Like they have a special dinner, cake, and the birthday boy and girl will get a nice uh, gift. And we started uh, 2013 and it was fantastic. I think I don't know what the budget was. And later I'll show you the budget. Uh, so we started ministering. Oh, there you go. 
birthday fund is $200,000 a month right there. So 200, so annually 2,400. It was given by a little kids in Las Vegas. Um, I was doing a revival meeting in Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas, America, USA. And, uh, and some like 13 year old, 15 year old girls, they did a house chores and they collected money for a whole year. Uh, and they gave a box full of cash to me when I was doing it. She said, they said, I want you to use it for the orphanages in Cambodia. So I was looking for a meaningful way to use the money. And I thought, why don't we celebrate birthday? So COP budget, wow, that year was 51,000. And so of that, I did that. And then I started giving uh, almost 5,000 a year for a rice fund because they ran out of rice. They didn't know how to feed them. And I said, this is not right. At least rice you should have. So I made a contract with Pastor Tang Bek Hong of New Life Church because his wife uh, had uh, some field in Batambang. So instead of giving the money to COP, I bought rice. I bought $420 worth of rice and will deliver the rice because a lot of times what happens, I don't know if you know this, and when you give the money to the, uh, the person who's in charge of the kitchen, there's kind of all kind of problem that happens. We don't want to give them that kind of opportunity. And then uh, we were giving for the, my patron was Heron Church in Korea. They were paying for rent, utilities, and general expense. They were giving about 6,300 per year. Now this is 2013, almost 10 years ago. You would probably be about 10,000 now because there's no such thing as $500 rent, right? The house, uh, 50, 60 people would be close to 1,000. So, so patron-client relations dynamic between me and was Seron Church of Korea was my patron because I got money from them. Then I became a first order broker and turned around and gave a central piece the funding. But then later they said, the Seron Church, Seron means a new church in Korean language. Seron means new in Korean language. So Seron Church said, hey, we don't want, we don't want to give it to you. And so can we just give it directly to Bopai? I said, that's fine with me because I don't take up any percentage. I don't take, you know, if someone gives me $100, I get, take the 100 and give the $100. If someone gives me 10,000, I take 10,000, give it to 10,000. So I don't take any percentage. So I said, that's fine. So now it shifted. So now Bopar has another patron named Seron Church. I am the, as a patron. So, so the dynamic is like that. Okay. Do you understand? <laughs> if you have any questions up to this point, please email me and I will address it uh, when we meet together through either Zoom or another lecture. So 2015, the central piece now growing. Greeting from Cambodia. As you know, we moved three times in four months. Once from our old place that often flooded into new villa. The new villa was great, but we lost major donor and could not afford the rent. So we had to move again, only three months. God bless COP through a conversation I had with our next door neighbor where Brian and I live. He said, you're willing to rent this place COP to you. So they moved three times in four months. Okay. And how did I play a role as a patron? So what happened is that when they were uh, shifting, moving, I had some money given to me uh, by another patron from Hong Kong. So I had a patron in Hong Kong, uh, this lawyer from Hong Kong. She came to Central Peace as a short-term mission and was playing guitar. She was so moved by Central uh, Peace kids. They loved Central Peace kids, he loved them. So he said, Pastor, I'd like to uh, uh, give you offering, but I want you to use this money to help Central Peace. So he gave me $5,000 and I kept it. And I, I told Bopar, Bopar, I received $5,000, but you don't really need it. So I'm going to keep it. When you need it, 
let's use it instead of, because when I give her 5,000 at annual budget, then it will go out as a rice money and you know uh, the, the children's uh, school uniform money and all that. So we will raise different projects for different, for example, I would ask, I would like to uh, feed these children some special meals. So I would have uh, uh, like a chicken leg dinner funding. So some people will give $500. Then I would give $100 one Wednesday, and then they will make chicken for 82 kids, something like that. So, and then I'll, I would actually have a birthday funding. Then I'll have a children's uh, school uniform, school uniform for like 82 kids and they need two pieces each with their names embroiled. It costs about two, three thousand dollars. So it's not a cheap and they need to change every year. So, so that I raise separately. So clothing funding, you know, chicken leg funding, you know, birthday funding and so it was all separate. So if I get, gave them 5,000, then you will just all disappear. So I said, let's keep it. So what happened is that when they were moving, they need a $5,000 deposit to get a new place. That's what I used, um, used that money for. But obviously the central piece in their newspaper, when I mentioned, why? Because God told us that we have to be nameless, faceless. Don't put your name anywhere. You know, actually I discovered this letter uh, later Many changes in center of peace. Big changes are affecting. Now this is Wednesday, 2016. This was July, 2015. 2016 in May, right here. Okay, something happened at COP. Big changes are affecting COP in that government is mandating that all the younger children five to 14 to be sent back to the relatives they will be returning to less than harmonious situation and where we know for sure they will not be sent to school, used as a child labor and around the house for farming or collecting recyclables. COP can keep them. So, and, and this is a really, really sad part, you know, uh, some well-meaning Christian lady, I think, of course, she's a Christian lady and she really loves the children. And so very well-meaning Christian lady uh, did some half-baked research, not such a great research. And she insists that younger children, it's better for them to live with the relatives instead of living in orphanages. Of course, there are a lot of abuse in orphanages. There is a financial embezzlement. There are a lot of evil people in the world, you know, a lot of bad people in the world. And these lot of bad people run the orphanage like a business and collect money and abuse money and abuse children. There are all kinds of stuff. Not at Central Peace. Central Peace was beautiful, run by a beautiful lady, loves the children. She was orphan herself and there was a financial integrity and, and all that. But some lady in Cambodia decided to do some half-baked research, not a very good research and decided that no, she said, it's, it's better for these children to go back to their relative, bad decision. And so she made that very popular and UN gave a whole bunch of money to Cambodian government and Cambodian government without spending their money to really make effort to relocate children properly, decide to send all their kids back to, back home, huge problem. So um, they start panicked and they start asking for donation. COP will be losing major donation, thousand a month ending July, can replace it, difficult continue to provide. So now the COP is going through huge problem. So it becomes now when all the children were sent back, uh, it, shift from Central Peace and they launched another agency called House of Peace, which we were completely in charge of and support. They becomes like homestay, homestay, okay. 
uh, and we start training uh, like Vichet, a training a salon. Uh, girls start going to professional schools. Okay, so central peace now becomes homestead because government would not allow to use the orphanage. So now it became by February 13, 2017, Central Peace is called now Central Peace Homestay. Okay. Um, so it, it's much smaller scale, but they're doing now uh, moving on to two more consistent donor. And the whole thing about self-sustainability and doing the pepper farm. And so basically, you know, Bopar is a very entrepreneur. She's a very businesswoman, very good one. So she said, you know what? Why don't we run a, a pepper farm? Okay, so she's trying hard to sell my personal pepper farm to finance our small business initiate to go COP pepper farm going. So she had a little pepper farm, she sold it. And then she's going to start larger pepper farm at uh, Ratanakiri and borrow some money. My goodness. We're now entering harvest time at my farm. We already have locals stealing our pepper, but we'll still expect to have some acceptable harvest. Unfortunately, since Vietnam is angry at Cambodia, they are refusing to buy our pepper and have forced the price down per kilo. <laughs> What's the problem? When, when Christians do business, they're not really business savvy, so they're gonna run into problems. So Vietnam got mad at Cambodians. And not only that, but that was the least of her problem. At Waratanakiri, Chinese came and bought literally hundreds of thousands of hectares of land and put peppers, and they're growing peppers there. So guess what? The pepper price went, <laughs> boy, ah, I feel sorry for her. But then they kept on with the program called Onyx, uh, Chorvan and Chanta. They start Onyx and Dove. Onyx and Dove are the uh, Brian's program. Central Peace, uh, 2017. Okay. Now, Bopar, uh, because she's known in the orphanage world, she decided she wants to make sure that when children are going back to village, that they are going to go to the right relatives who's not going to use them as a child labor and all that. So she started working with Ministry of Social Welfare. And she joined the organization and she did everything possible to make sure the COP children, when they go back to village, then they will actually be taken care of, not used, abused as child labor. And so they start holding different seminars uh, for Center of Peace homestay children. And then House of Peace, then it becomes from Center of Peace, now it becomes House of Peace homestay. Because by this time, our House of Peace shut down. It closed because there was no need. We sent all of our uh, 18 kids through college and they were out. So now it becomes house of peace, homestay. And these children, right, at Ratanakiri now learn to how to minister. And all these uh, children that we raised, Chorvan, and now becomes a minister. And they do everything that we've taught them, like haircutting, washing, um, so we saw a great transformation. The House of Peace Homestay, uh, ministering and have worship. So I think time ran out. It should be my first lecture. So what do you think? What say you? So please um, write to me through email so I would uh, respond to you and also uh, I'm going to go in depth. I'm going to go deeply into patron client because in my PhD, not in my book, talks about 10 characteristics of patron client, all 10 of them. 
not only am I going to share with you what it is, in the, but I'm going to share in the context of my relationship with central peace, COP, and see how I progress from being a father to a sponsor, now as a partner, hopefully. Uh, and I'm going to share not only my success, but my failure. And I'm going to be very brutally honest with you. Uh, uh, and give you accurate information so that you could learn and you could apply in your own ministry. All right, I'll see you at next lecture then. Bye for now.